Hello everyone, I'm Triple J and welcome to a very special episode of Brain Food at the Movies. For today's episode, I will be reviewing the movie of the very special book written by one Stephanie Meyer. I am talking about, of course, The Host. I will be getting on a bus pretty soon in order to go to the theater where it will be showing, which is at least a good half hour away. It will be my first experience here in Burnaby. And I will see this movie and I will see if it actually does anything with the potential that this book has and has squandered immensely. I've only read 200 pages into this book and it is, as one of my commenters on LiveJournal said, non-sexual porn which is you only get off on the emotions of the characters instead of actually becoming invested in them as characters that you care about. Well, I'm off and I'll be back in a couple hours. Later! Hey guys, I'm checking back in after a couple of hours. I just wanted to let everything stir around the brain, soak in, marinate, and just so I could truly think over everything that I saw in this movie. So it's just going to be me, myself, and I, and Whiskey. So, let's get to this movie here. This movie, unfortunately, and, well, see, there are different things that uh, something can do to really piss me off when you write something. I mean, bad grammar, occasional mistakes, that's minorly irritating. Uh, and it can happen to the best it can happen to the best of us. Sometimes things just slip through. When you are intentionally offensive and trying to be provocative, that gets me really, really angry. Like, I, I can't stand stuff like this. I'm talking about I'm talking about stuff like anything written by Mark Millar, who is, you know, intentionally hateful and angry and just everything else like that. And then there is the stuff that squanders potential and is completely and utterly naive of the messages that it sends. And this movie, based on this book by Stephanie Meyer, the host, is, much like the Twilight series from everything I read about it, very naive about the messages that it sends about consent. I'll get to that you know, in just a little moment here. Uh, first off, this, it was extremely... Is that enough? Here we go. It was extremely disappointing because this... It had a lot of potential. You have an invading alien uh, species. It conquered the world. Humanity has lost their small pockets of resistance, and they're trying to, you know, uh, finish them off and possess them, which is why everyone has got the, you know, the silver-gray eyes, that, if you've ever seen the trailer, or anything like that. <coughs> Ugh. Now, we are talking about a species that essentially it looks like a little glowworm with a bunch of uh, sprouts attached to it. It's a little glowworm. It has no biological sex. It has no socially constructed gender, like what we understand it. And yet this movie could not be more heteronormative, patriarchy filled, whitewashed. It squandered the absolute potential it had. If you, uh, the, it, the aliens, I, I don't even, they don't even have a name. I can't even, uh, I don't know, Silver Eyes or whatever the hell they're called. Uh, they honestly don't have a name. I've only two, I'm only about 200 pages into this book. They don't have a name that they call themselves. Or at least if they did, I pretty much well forgot it. Now, the, uh, there are several times throughout this, the movie where, you know, they say, we have not experienced any species like humanity. Humanity is fighting fiercely, you know, they're violent and barbaric and all this other stuff, you know, fit into those kind of tropes and that they're settling into bond with us for pretty much, well, saying for our own good, you know, that kind of trope. Now, The love of Melanie, this this main character here, that's her Melanie, 
the 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 alien is called the Wanderer. Melanie's love is so great for I don't know this this bland this bland white guy here. I, I don't know. Anyhow, it's so great, and he, and she has a little brother named Jamie, which I fucking hate because my name's Jamie too. And because of that, she's able to overcome just about uh, much of the the control that the Wanderer has, and because the Wanderer is put into her body so that she can sift through Melanie's memories and find out where the rest of the human resistance is. And the book sets itself up a lot more to explore this potential and then utterly drops the ball. The movie does nothing with it. This is a love triangle alien invasion species movie. It's a love triangle. I'm not kidding you. It, which ties into what it says about consent, which is very, very bad. I was mostly bored throughout this movie. In fact, the eight giggling girls in front, a couple of them even uh, apologized to me and I said it was just okay because quite frankly they're running commentary, laughing, jumping around the theater. It actually added much to the movie, a much needed distraction. Like, oh, I wonder what they're doing. Wow, she got a high jump from that one seat to the next. And Oh, jeez, this, this movie was... Okay, in sifting through the memories, the Wanderer finds that Melanie comes across this this guy here, uh, Blandy, Mc, Blandy McBlanderson, number one, and he has been like, oh, it's been two years since I last seen a human, and he kisses her. And to the movie's credit, Melanie is like, oh, what, yeah, uh, you had to kiss me? So I, it was good that she, like, didn't like that. But then she falls in love with him because he's the only man around. And and she's, she does laundry. I mean, she does all this stuff to protect her little brother, but she also does laundry. In fact, the roles of men and women is very set in patriarchal standards. The men go out and gather food and fight and sneak around and all kinds of dangerous stuff. The women stay and they tend the wheat, uh, wheat fields and do laundry and other womanly things. So, uh, knock against that. But yeah, anyhow, he kisses her without her consent. She's like, that's not good. I don't like that. And then later on, they fall in love. And because of that deep love, she's already able, able to overcome the wanderer's control, mostly. And then we have this guy here. This guy here. It's afterwards when Melanie directs the Wanderer off into the desert. I think it's in Arkansas. I don't know. I don't know much about the states. Nebraska, Arkansas. Uh, the movie takes place almost entirely in a vacuum, despite the fact that it actually shows wide panning shots uh, of the planet Earth and, and the stars and everything. It's so narrow minded, very much so. It's. it's uh, yeah, so anyhow, they find out, and it's like, oh my god, they took Melanie, you know, and your parasite, and she gets slapped around. He fucking, he freaking comes up, whack, slaps her down, head goes, right up against a rock, and, and then, so he's standing guard, and her grandpa is, is like, you know, her uncle, I'm not sure which, and one thing I'll say about the older character, older male characters in these books, as Stephanie Myers right, they're almost always cooler. You want to read about them. You're more interested in them. And it's the same thing here. Grandpa is like really cool. He, he found this uh, this series of caves set in this desert rock pile thingy and he built like this series of mirrors so that I could direct sunlight down and grow wheat in secret and everything. Uh, and he takes her in. He slaps her around and then he's standing guard, and then others comes like, okay, we gotta kill her, including this guy here. Oh boy, this guy here. When the thing, there's a fight, for some reason he starts defending her, and then he tries to kill her by strangling her. Like he's like, 
And then he's like, breathe, Mondor, breathe! And then Awesome Grandpa shows up with a shotgun. And then later on, Blander McBlandingston McBlonde here, he, he falls in love with Wanderer. And it's like, like you were trying, at one point in the movie, he's like, you were trying to kill me! And he's like, I know, it's a strange world. I, I, this is not the basis for a healthy relationship. It really isn't. I mean, I, you see it's like, and she's like, and it's like, no, that's, oh, that's not good. Not to mention that Melanie is still conscious. So when she and him start smooching, she's like, no, no, do not like, do not like, do not like. So again, movie brings up the issue of consent and is like, uh, well, she, she wants it. Like, no, she wants it, but then Melanie doesn't want it, but she wants it. I'm like, uh, this is really bad, wrong, no, good, no, 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 this is not romantic. This love triangle is really horribly bad and ugly. It's also what it says about consent, that women don't want it, do want it, even when they say they don't want it. Uh, that's wrong. No, no, very wrong, very bad. So, it, it, the plot, I can't believe this thing, this thing doesn't even have a plot. I mean, I could sort of see the structure and that it was supposed to be a character study. It honestly would have been better have been like the, the alien, focus more on the aliens and they're dealing with the intense emotional being of humanity. Like for example, there's a seeker and, and seekers are, they seek humans. Yes, very much, very much clear that job title, seek humans, you know, seekers. And she's growing more and more frustrated because Wanderer, Wanderer got away. And uh, she's like, I'm in control. Like your your host is taking you over, but not not me. I'm in control, and it was a shame because, you know, I honestly would have liked to have seen more of how she dealt with it. You know, like like uh, how does she deal with anger? Because apparently, like they all they don't lie to each other. These agents they don't lie to each other. They don't corrupt each other. They don't fight each other. They're all in loving peace and conquering humanity. You know, and. In conquering other planets, they actually conquered like ten other planets. Ten in the same fashion in which they bond with other people and like a parasite, you know, live off of them and take control of them. But it obviously would have been interesting to follow more of her story. If anything, because her actress, I don't know who she was, um, you'll probably see some name titles like right here when I look them up and do the editing and everything. She was a better actor. Like the dialogue in this movie was so wooden. The acting in this movie was so wooden. Just, uh, at one point during the flashback, Blandy McBlanderston, make dark hair here, is talking with Melanie uh, and saying, just because we might be the last two people on earth, you don't have to kiss me. But I do, but you don't have to. But I do, but you don't have to. I'm like, what? And even the child actor that they got to play, Jamie, fuck, why do you have to have my name? Ugh. He's, fuck. he's trying to carry weight. Uh, I'll give the actor from who plays Carl from The Walking Dead this. Uh, he's actually able to hold some weight. I don't know what his name is, but he's actually able to act like, you believe that this is a little, as much as I hate The Walking Dead, and the guy, the actor who plays Carl does not annoy me, because, you know, uh, except when he accidentally led that one zombie back to the household ranch, and it, it and it kind of, uh, it killed the other guy, and it was all his fault, and stuff like that. Anyhow, anyhow, the, the actor they got to play, <sighs> fucking Jamie, Jesus Christ, fuck, Anyhow, <laughs> he, he, he couldn't, he can't act. He really can't act. And it was like, and they're trying to carry some kind of importance because 
Wanderer or Wanda as Awesome Grandpa shortens her name to be. And he actually figures this out. Like, something's strong, strange about this. Uh, like, uh, Aunt, there's this other character, Aunt Maggie. She goes, Slap! And you fucking parasite! Uh, and she tells Alison Grandpa, You're only doing this because you think that's Maggie. We all know that's not Maggie anymore. It's the aliens. It's a parasite. And he actually, his reasoning is sound. It's like, Now, why would you come out here? in the middle of nowhere with no backup you're different something's different with you so which is why he doesn't automatically put a bullet in her head which is the idea that, that everyone else is like bullet you know or like machete or gun something like that you see one of them doesn't matter bang you shoot them on sight because all they're going to do is use the hostess memories to find out more about what's left of humanity on the planet and so Wait, I lost my train of thought. And so, yeah, but... Ah, uh, Jesus. Just, the, the issues of consent, very, very bad. This movie flops on it. The other thing is, there are actually some black people in this. I'm like, I... There's one black people you see at the very beginning, and you know she's black because she's dressed in African garb. So she represents all of Africa. There's all of Africa. And then you see, you know, India, because there's like... Indian people showing at the beginning and they represent all of India because it's like, you know, like um, uh, the woman in the dress and she got the dot in her forehead and uh, apo shoot, apologies, uh, um, I'm not, I don't know the proper name for, for that significance of of that. Um, I'll, I'll probably just put that in a note somewhere. Cause. Anyhow, but yeah, so there are actually some black people. The black people do all the dying in this movie. There are a couple of deaths, and the black people do them, and you actually see them on screen. Uh, one of them is one of the humans, and they're, they're, they're bringing back supplies, and they get caught because they're going above the speed limit. Which means that, apparently, the human all the human resistance had to do to get supplies in town was to drive into town and wear sunglasses so that their normal human eyes wouldn't be seen. Which means that this is about basically about the dumbest bunch of alien invaders that I've ever seen. Which also means that humanity was twice as goddamn stupid because we were defeated by them. So anyhow, him and his partner, oh no, we've been discovered. They're going over to speed them and follow them. It's like, fuck, we've been found. And then him and his buddy is like, well, we're not going to be taken. Not going to be taken. And truck, brick wall. <laughs> Splat. And then the other one is actually one of the other Seekers following another truck. And then the main Seeker, the blonde haired white woman. You know, no black women in this. Seriously. Not a single black woman. There's one woman of color. You saw her at the beginning for like five seconds. No women of color in this movie. Whatsoever. Uh, nice. Entire planet taken over and all of humanity defeated. And only white women. And one. Indian woman, or one, well, one black woman, at, at the girl at the five seconds. Oh, Jesus Christ, oh, this fucking movie. A anyhow, so, anyhow, she gets, she's starting to get really mad that she can't find Wanderer, or her leaves are drying up, and uh, she's, and one of the humans drops a gun, she's like, ooh, gun, bang, 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 and she kills one of her own, who is one of the black guys. So, black men do all the die, do just about do all the dying. There's one white guy who commits suicide off screen, and that's about it. But all the black guys do all the dying in this movie. So, you see some black guys, but two of them do all the dying in this movie. Now, oh yeah, I was talking about plot. This, there's no real plot. If there was supposed to be a character study about humanity versus aliens and what does being human mean? What does being this alien species mean? You know, like, can we coexist? Can we love, you know, when you're stealing other bodies and wearing them like trench coats that we can take on and put off, take off and put on? Uh, it doesn't explore it. It's just a love story. It's a narrow-minded uh, love story taking place in a vacuum. And it's very, very, very bad. It's just, like I said, murder the issues of consent? He shouldn't be kissing her. Because that body is not hers. It's Melanie's. But he's like, 
I love you. And, and Melanie's like, oh God, no, no, we're not going to have sex. And, and it's, there's no plot. It's just, it's just, I mean, there's kind of a plot in technical terms, but there's no overarching story. Again, it would have been honestly better to have just followed the seeker because that actress could act. And Awesome Grandpa was awesome. And I'll try Awesome Grandpa. I'll put actor's name right here. Right here. And Awesome Grandpa. He was he was really good. I, I think he's a good character actor. I'm not sure. If I'm but yeah, so black people do all the dying. There are almost no women of color. Uh, again, no gay people, no bisexual people, no transgender people. This is a straight story only. And it goes straight to nowhere. Is 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 literally nowhere. It goes nowhere, and it's just oh my god! It's at the end they find out that um, because fucking Jamie gets an infected leg and the doctor apparently forgot to stock penicillin or something, can't cure it. Melanie has to go into the hospitals and steal some back and she finds like this little it's like this little sphere type thing and she says you can coax it because the humans tried cutting them out tried cutting out the you know the the aliens and, and Wanda finds out oh, you monsters you're killing us and awesome guy was like yeah we're sorry but what the fuck you want come on you're we're, we're dying here we're the only humans we know of we're gonna grow old and die and you p assholes are gonna take over our planet what do you expect and <laughs> Anyhow, Mel Wanda you know, finds out, you know, you can coax us out with love and tenderness and kindness and put us in and then send them off to the furthest planet. And by the time they get there, because light speed is, they're just slightly faster than light speed travel that they got at these um, places, just that anyone can go to. <laughs> it's really quite funny. Interstellar travel is very easily um, uh, accessed in these little silver thingies that shoot off but anyhow so like instead of death you know exile and which is you know which is good because then both sides get to live and there's no justice or punishment for the in invading alien army and and the end ends with um melanie like you know i will die wait why why do you have to? i will die so that melanie can have her life back and be with uh, jared jared yeah that's that's, that's his name, Blondie McBlanderson, this guy here, he, and then this guy be like, No, I don't want you to, I don't want you to, I love you, and, you know, um, oh god, I need more whiskey. And so, um, she, uh, it ends with that, and it ends up that, well, you know, the humans, they, they had a few spare bodies, because instead of, uh, dying so that Melanie could live, they put Wanderer into a new body. And they found out that, well, a couple of humans, when, when they cut them out, they cut out the aliens, uh, the, you know, the glowing worms with the, oh, no, not even glow worms. They look more like slimmer pill bugs with lots of strands of light everywhere. It, it, they found out that one, this one just wouldn't die. She wouldn't wake up. So they stuck Wanda into there and like, uh, well, huh? Again, consent. I mean, you, these are human bodies. They're not exactly a clothes. It's not like, well, I mean, not like the humans are using them. I mean, the aliens are using them like clothes. Like, I don't know, Jay, should I, should I have, or the, uh, which clothes should I have? Should I have the blonde tall male, or the young black girl, or the elder Asian male? Should I? Hmm. Which which one should I use? I I can choose this one because they can keep my body in storage, as Seeker tells Wanda at one point. And I'm like, no, but it was literally like any kind of sacrifice that Wanda was trying to make was just they just wrote them right to us. Oh, we had a human body spare, like right spare human body. There it is. There you go. You and 
Blondie McBlanderson McBlonde here can live happily ever after. You and Wanda, yay! And then the movie ends with them being pulled over by other Seekers and they find out, well, there are other group, human groups out there and there are other aliens who are helping the humans because they find out that conquering and subjugating people and using their bodies, excuse me, as living clothes to live in, it's wrong. It's very, 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 very wrong. And then credits. I will say this to the eight giggling girls. Well, two of them burst into tears at the end where Wanda was going to just die when she asked the doctor to take her out. And two of them burst, I'm not kidding, two of them burst into tears. I'm like, oh, really? Because honestly, between the wooden acting and the horrible dialogue, this movie did nothing to earn any of the pathos or emotion. Oh, hey, Facebook. That it, oh, hey, Facebook that it was going for. It didn't earn it, not in any means necessary. And just, ugh, it wasted a lot of potential. We're, we're talking about alien beings that are like little squiggly balls of light uh, that have no biological sex, that have no gender, and they don't do anything to play around with that. One really I mean, it has like a lot of beautiful cinematography of the desert and that, and it's really nice. And, uh, you know, the character arc of the Seeker character was pretty interesting to see. You see someone like, almost as a soldier, kind of going along and then start to lose it and lose it and become more violent and turning into the more darker desires of the, hum of the human that she's occupying. And, but there was also a part where the literally go to a store, and it's marked store. It's like they took a superstore or a Costco, they painted yellow and they put white, they painted white and they put store right on the front. And all the products, there's no labels on them, there's no brand names. It was actually a really interesting thing to say, see because what use would brand names have for aliens? Only thing they need, the only thing they need this food to support the bodies they're in. You know, they need water, they need food, they need nutrients and minerals and, and everything like that. That was really interesting to see. In fact, on second thought, there were, aside from maybe the cars and the vehicles that they used, there was almost no brands used in this movie. And so I honestly would have liked to have seen more of that. You know, like what were some of the humans? Uh, idea because we are so tied in the brands. I mean, I mean, look, look, look at this. This is the MP Lambor 05 masterpiece. You know, we got Transformers here. This is from Hasbro. You know, we think about that. I mean, I just saw G.I. Joe Retaliation. I kind of laughed when the big Hasbro symbol came up because it's a toy line. And they could have really played around with that, but again, like every other bit of potential, such as exploring gender and, and, and orientation, no gay people in this, none, no bisexuals, no transsexuals, none, not a single Asian either, not anyone from anywhere on the continent of Asia or, or uh, Asian Pacific Islanders, if, if I've got that correct, uh, none, absolutely none. They never played around with anything like that. They just completely, utterly dropped the ball. But then again, we are talking about a book, a movie based on a book written by Stephanie Meyer, who's about as white bread as white whitiness can get. And like she's literally so white that she's a gallon of milk tossed in a snowbank in the middle of a blowing blizzard set forth right up at the North Pole of the Arctic Circle. So, it's not like you're going to get much here. Really, it's not hor not horrible, but some of the issues that it raises on consent are very, very bad. Diversity is no good. It's very boring. There's almost no plot. And I suspect that the book will be very much the same. As I said, I'm only 200... What page am I on? Page. Oh my gosh, 95. 95. How many fucking pages are there? 95. You're kidding me. Wait. Let's see here. Let's see. I'm 95. 95 pages in, and there's. How many pages? 820. Oh, wait. Fuck. 
Oh, and there's a bonus chapter. Holy fuck, there's a bonus chapter. I'm nowhere near drunk enough for this. So, in short... In short, just... No, 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 I spilled my whiskey. Mm. It, don't, don't. This movie is very boring. It's very open for mocking, but almost nothing happens. It squanders all the potential it had at discussing anything regarding sexual orientation and gender and, and morality. Be because, I mean, the humans are technically still kind of trapped in there, and even a lot of humans killed possessed humans. So, could you imagine it's like, oh my god, she could have been saved and I killed her. Oh my god, I'm a murderer. Nope, didn't explore that at all. Uh, don't, don't see this movie. Oh fuck, don't see this movie. I need more drinks. I'm a. Uh, uh, I'm getting kind of drunk, so I got pizza, I got cheesecake. And that's it. I'm Triple J at the movies. Signing off. Take care.